Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. On General Hospital, it was the week many had been waiting for. Michael fired Nana. While Cyrus was making the rounds in Port Charles, upsetting everyone, no one had informed poor Ava that Nicholas was still alive. Though she shouldn't, Brooke Lynn intends to turn down Tracy's gift, and Cody was ecstatic to hear that Sasha will be staying in the area. Up until the very end, when we were left with a fantastic cliffhanger, Friday's show was essentially a snooze fest. Michael is doing everything he can to keep Nina away from Willow and his family by leveraging her secret, as I hinted at in my last two columns. Many admirers of this plot are divided. While some would have preferred to see Nana completely naked, others enjoy seeing her writhe and believe she deserves everything she gets. Others are holding out for Nina to take control and uncover Michael's scheme to use Dex as leverage to put Sonny in jail. There are, however, people who believe the plot should just come to a stop because it has been going on for far too long. Make sure to leave your thoughts and position on this topic in the comments section. Although I think the plot has gone on for far too long, I also want Nina to learn about Michael and Dex's scheme and put Michael on an even playing field. Some viewers have speculated that Harmony is actually telling Willow not to trust Michael in her nightmares. It does work because he is once again hiding his activities from his wife. Harmony's attempt to caution Willow about trusting Nana makes more logic but she is the last person who need to be lecturing anyone about honesty and confidence. And why on earth did Willow imagine Nina would want, much less want to wear, the bracelet that belonged to the person who abducted her daughter? Michael will eventually lose his influence over Nina when Ned unavoidably regains his memory, even if Nana is unaware that he set up Dex to kill Sonny. Ned is probably going to start by coming clean about Nina, whether Michael suffers any consequences for using blackmail on Nina, rather than exposing her and telling his mother that it was Nina who exposed her will be interesting to see. The main reason I'm eager for the truth to be revealed and for this story to come to an end is probably that I'm sick of Carly, Joss, Michael, and others pretending that the whistleblower did something much worse than Carly and Drew, and that they are always holding this person responsible for putting Drew in jail and nearly killing him. Although most of us were aware that Sasha wouldn't be traveling from Port Charles to Austin, for a brief moment I honestly believed she might go off camera. I'm glad she didn't, and I'm excited to watch how her and Cody's relationship grows. Even though they aren't even a pair, I'm officially crushing on them and believe they have a good chance of being my new favorite duo on the show. Even though Sasha is unaware that Tracy, of all people, and Maxie, of course, have her back, she already has a sneaking suspicion that she might be exposed as the face of deception. The issue for Lucy and Maxie is that Blaze was requested to take on the role of deception's new face. Better yet, only two faces. At deception, there must be more than one division, or there may be, and that requires distinct faces for various campaigns and divisions. She has no interest in doing business with Tracy or her pilfered firm, as I had predicted when we learned last week that Tracy intended to give deception to Glenn Lynn. But why hasn't she recognized that she could return it to Lucy if she takes it? Naturally, given her knowledge of Tracy, it is likely that she will condition the ownership transfer on Brooke Lynn's inability to accomplish that. Cyrus quickly made his rounds, apologizing to everybody who was not interested in hearing about it or seeing his shaven face. I was genuinely pleased with Portia when she confronted Cyrus and reprimanded him. But all the praise deserves to Tabiana Ali, who played Trina, for her amazing tongue lashing of Cyrus when he showed up to the gallery to see Ava. Love him or hate him, Cyrus has a very strong sense of self-righteousness. It took bravery for him to ask for both Trina's and Portia's forgiveness. And I really did adore it when he said to Spencer, Please call me uncle. I can't help but wonder whether Trina will have a problem with Spencer and Cyrus' relationship. In addition, 
Esme was confessing to Alexis that she has emotions for Spencer in the same episode that Cyrus informed Trina that he owed her money for what? Happenstance. I doubt it. Could Trina ask Cyrus for assistance in getting rid of Esme? Laura and Alexis talked about a topic that a lot of viewers have been curious about. Is Cyrus' redemption by God a genuine event or just a performance? He may have been transformed by God, but when he became enraged with Mason for defying him about Ava, it certainly didn't seem like it. What appeared to be the return of the old Cyrus even seemed to have scared Austin. My expectations were greatly exceeded by the ending twist of Friday's program. I truly expected Mason to turn up dead and leave viewers wondering who did it, especially after TJ's mother informed him that he essentially had no case to present against Mason for his kidnapping, and Mason threatened to drag Austin down with him for Ava's kidnapping. However, TJ discovered Austin attempting to choke his cousin in the final moments of the program. That would effectively silence Mason. I don't think the program would want to lose Jeff Kober in that fashion unless he chose to leave the soap opera. But Cyrus would be a better choice if they were going to have a murder mystery. The exchanges between Ava and Trina, in which they expressed their mutual significance, were incredibly precious. I love how these two are pals. Obrecht's return to the city was well appreciated. Her moments with James and Maxie were fantastic. And I really hope that since they mentioned Halloween, we'll get to see some celebrations the next week. In addition, I'm curious to see James' costume. It seems that Laura and Alexis are preparing Nicholas's return by pointing out that he probably wouldn't face any charges when he returns to the city. The Thursday episode, with Finn and Liz bumping into each other all day, was a complete sleep fest. Even though they haven't even had sex, they clearly needed some time away. But as a viewer, I would have enjoyed this trip much more if Aiden and Violet had gone along. They're also, to be honest, much less boring to watch thanks to the kids. Willow and Michael seem interesting compared to these two. The scene on Friday where they were going tree-tapping for syrup was so ridiculous that it looked like something from a Hallmark film. I felt like throwing up as Finn licked the syrup off Liz's fingertips. Still, considering Michael Easton's previous involvement on Port Charles, I found the vampire remarks amusing. Adam returned and it's obvious that he has feelings for Joss. I don't see Joss giving up Dex for Adam, even though I don't like Joss and Dex together. I'm delighted to see Yuri back on our screens lately. I enjoy him and Terry together, and I find his demeanor to be endearing and humorous. What precisely is his role, though? Is he the errand boy from Quartermain? Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.